Rebel News covers a lot of things in Canada, but sometimes we cover news around the world, partly because it's interesting, but mainly because there's a theme that links that coverage to here back home. For example, we're interested in freedom of speech around the world. We're interested in multiculturalism and the lack of integration of certain migrants. And we're also interested in the threat of open Borders. We've been covering that at Roxham Road, where tens of thousands of people from the United States who are not American citizens, but who are foreigners, often ordered deported from America, has simply walked across into Quebec. Well, now there is a massive gaping hole in the U.S. border between Texas and Mexico, and literally millions, not even hundreds of thousands, but millions of people just walk across. Many of them are from Mexico and other Latin American countries who seek economic benefit, but many of them are not. They just know it's an entryway into the country. Here's a terrifying video I saw on Twitter the other day. Someone who was not from Latin America, someone who appeared to be Middle Eastern, who was asked who he was and said, oh, you'll find out who I am. Take a look at this. By the way, if you are smart enough, you will know who I am. But you are really not smart enough to know who I am. But soon you're going to know who I am. Very easy. Wow, very easy. The, the entitlement, the entitlement. No, believe me, I'm much better than that. The entitlement, guys. Wow. My point is lots of people who want to get into the United States for nefarious purposes are coming through those open borders. Some of it may be organized crime. Much of it may, God forbid, be terrorism. So we have sent two investigative reporters down to Eagle Pass, Texas, and they join me now via Skype, live from well, what looks like the border, Alex Lavoie and Lincoln J. How are you guys? It looks like uh, you found yourself a border fence, and if I see that right, that looks like a kind of military vehicle. Can you tell me where you are, how you got there, and how long you're gonna be there? and what your plans are. I'd like to talk about that with you guys to see what kind of coverage we can expect from you over the next few days. We arrived last night uh, from San Antonio. Uh, we drove up for about two hours and a half. Uh, it was quite uh, some something to drive. Uh, we didn't expect to see as much there, like just like showing in front of your car. Uh, a little bit dangerous, but we are here now. We are at the Mexican border. Behind us is uh, Texas National. It's the Texas National Guard. So that's not an American yeah. military vehicle or a or a federal border patrol. You're saying that is part of the Texas National Guard. Am I hearing you correctly? Yes. Yes, that's the Texas Texas National Guard behind us. They're actually uh, they they speak pretty openly to us and identified us because we weren't sure who exactly they were we wanted to be uh specific and it is the texas national guard there and uh pretty open i don't know if you'd get that same kind of open communication uh in canada with with that type of personnel but yes that's texas national guard behind us there's you can see razor wire all along the uh, border fence behind us so we're gonna see what lies ahead in the next couple of days there is the, the river, the Rio Grande River that are splitting the Mexican side and the Texas side. And uh, behind the fence, there is a park. And over the river, like along the river, there is ra razor wire that has been installed by the Texas government. And uh, it's since then legal battle between Greg Abbott and the Biden administration started. Right, because of course borders are traditionally a federal responsibility. That's certainly how they are here in Canada. And traditionally that's how it is in the United States. Everyone knows that Donald Trump, one of his signature promises that I think it's fair to say was not kept, was building the border wall. But Joe Biden isn't even pretending. And I think what, what what's incredible is a letter that the, the Texas governor sent to Joe Biden where he basically says, this is a crisis, you're not doing your job, the Texas Constitution allows us to protect our state, that supersedes any federal law, and he basically said, we are going to defend our borders because the federal government is failing or refusing to do so. And in the last week since he had that letter, 
um, an enormous number of other U.S. states have said we're with Texas. And they've actually, if I understand correctly, sent paramilitary or military or even police vehicles to help the, the wall. If Joe Biden federalizes our National Guard, that would be the biggest political blunder that he could make. And that's why I think he will not do it. That said, of course, I am prepared in the event that they do make such a blunder to make sure that Texas will be able to continue to secure our border. Can you envision a scenario in which you would put armed state employees on the border instead of the National Guard of Texas? We, we do have other armed state employees uh, on the border as we speak right this minute. And uh, that's the Texas Department of Public Safety, as well as other law enforcement officers, as well as National Guard from other states. And you can be assured there will be more National Guard from other states and more law enforcement officers within the state of Texas and other states. And, Tucker, I just signed a law, a new law in the state of Texas that will go into effect on March the 5th that authorizes any law enforcement officer in the state of Texas to be able to arrest anybody coming across the border illegally. Tell me, have you seen any other, you mentioned that's a Texas National Guard vehicle behind you. Have you seen any Floridians or any other states that said, we stand with Texas and we're actually going to send help? Have you detected any of that? Uh, We haven't seen any uh, out of state personnel yet we've the only other personnel that we've seen that we've been able to identify other than the texas national guard that's behind us is uh, a state trooper so a texas state trooper but like i said we we literally just got here this morning and it seems like the area that we're in right now it's shelby park so this is like the notorious area for the illegal migrants to cross one of the busiest sections along the southern border but now it seems that this area has become a little bit hot there's a lot of media uh, a lot of personnel texas national guard so this area in a sense is very highly watched now so we're hearing different things like people are crossing down more towards uh, down that way uh, different parts where where they're still crossing and we're seeing some footage online of people still making the cross but it seems that this area behind us has been kind of shut down the park is shut down but this area is was was extremely busy in december in one night alone or in one day they had reportedly approximately 10,000 illegal migrants cross so that just shows you the scale of, of the amount of people it seems like the word got out and people are flooding through you know and- i i know that um uh, biden doesn't care about that he he likes the stress on texas which is a republican-led state demographically he likes that but um Texas has done something very strategic. They have flown and bussed many of these migrants to Democrat-run places like Chicago, New York, Los Angeles, um, places that have boasted about being, quote, sanctuary cities. It's easy, for example, Philadelphia. Here's a clip of their mayor uh, with some happy dance when uh, they declared Philadelphia a sanctuary city. Take a look at this goofiness a sanctuary city yeah (laughs) well that clip shows someone who knows he's just making a pr statement but he never thought in a million years he would have to pony up and i think the brilliant strategy of texas was to take a fraction of the problem like you say ten thousand people in one night that's normal for texas but that has stressed out new york philadelphia chicago la all these democrat cities um What's the what's the public mood of Americans in Texas? Put aside the migrants themselves for a moment. Do they feel like America's being overrun? It, in a way, it's like the end of the Roman Empire. Barbarians just streaming across the border. That's how it looks to me. How do the locals feel about what's been going on and about Texas's attempt to fight back? Well, I would say that most of the people agree that there is a problem that is getting out of end. Um, some of them feel a kind of a sh- not not sad because they under- some of them say that I cannot understand their struggle, but we struggle also here. We have our own resources that is giving away. So most of the people that we did talk to, they agree that there is a problem with that the something needs to be done. But most of them, they don't know what it needs to be done. And a lot of uh, them agree that under Donald Trump, the situation at the border was way better handled than under Biden administration. Yeah, we have a we have a, a video coming out where we spoke to people in San Antonio, which 
uh, I guess is one of the bigger cities that's located close to the border here. Like Alexa said earlier, it's about two and a half hour drive from here. And in that city, it seemed like everybody that we spoke to clearly understood that there is a big problem going on at the border with people crossing. And like Alexa said, some of them have sympathy. Some of them just don't want any crossings. And pretty much all of them realize that America itself has many, many issues right now and that they should probably be, be putting Americans first before illegal migrants that are crossing. There's homeless people uh, in San, San Antonio that we spoke to that they just don't understand why people coming here from other countries are getting essentially better treatment than they are. Congress, get your act together and fix it. This is a situation that's gone on for years and years and years. We need to defend our borders against people who want to cause this harm. We need legal mm -hmm. immigration, but illegal immigration kind of it muddies the water. We're going to have to pay for it eventually. I feel like what Ab is doing is, is the right thing in a sense. Uh, now, Alexa, you speak uh, English and you speak French, and I understand you speak Spanish as well. Um, I wonder if you'll have a chance to use that to talk to some of the migrants themselves. Now, like I say, not all of them are from Latin America. Uh, a terrifying trend is that people from Africa, from the Middle East, from China, see that there's this big, stupid, open border and they can't believe their luck. And so they're flooding in. I mean, it's really an international, it's like an airport, international arrivals, people from every place. But uh, I imagine that the bulk are still from Latin America. Have you had a chance to encounter any of those migrants? And if so, what kind of things do you think you would ask them in Espanol? So, so far since we arrived late last night and that right now, as Lincoln was mentioning, this is a hot point. So there is no much crossing anymore. So we are going to drive and head the other side where uh, Lincoln were t was talking about, uh, because apparently it's where the migrants are crossing. Of course, I'm going to try to engage conversation with them. First of all, I really want to know which country they are coming from. And uh, also, what is the main reason why they are coming into U.S.? Is it uh, politically? Is it uh, economic? Is it uh, because they have family? Uh, we want to know a little bit more like about people who are crossing into U.S. because people need to uh, remember the people who are crossing here, some of them will probably end up at the Canadian border and they will cross illegally and we will have the same problem that is coming up. We know that we always have the same problem than U.S. but a little bit further. Uh, we are about five years like behind the U.S. so if we are not reporting on this important story, but we will end up with uh, this kind of story at our border. Another question that pops into my mind is, what are these people going to do when they get here? Because, like I said, Americans, Canadians, they're struggling enough to put a roof over their head, to pay rent, to pay for groceries. How are these people going to come here and, and get work and basically pay for themselves to survive here? So it's... Uh, it's very interesting, and uh, we'll see what awaits us. And I, I, it's really interesting also to to learn about how they they, they did their journey, their journey all the way up to this border. Did they pay someone? Did they cross the Darien Gap, the dangerous Darien Gap? And what pushed them to come all the way here? Is it because they know they will have a better life, or maybe they will have like uh, services, more accessible services? Uh, I think uh, there is a lot, lot to uh, uncover here. Can you guys keep an eye out for NGOs or other organizers? And the reason I say that is um, to have tens of thousands, sometimes 10,000 in a single day, of people coming to the border. They need a map. They need directions. They need instructions. Uh, where do you cross? What supplies do you bring for the journey? What do you say when you're accosted by immigration police? Um, where do you go? Like it, it's it's not organic. There are people 
organizing it. And I remember a few years ago when our mission specialist, David the Menzoid Menzies, went down to what was called a Mexican caravan. Uh, we saw that there were organizers, just there were trucks. Like, for example, who's paying for the trucks? Who's renting the trucks? Um, that's one of the things we observed when David went, uh, went down for the caravan. That's what they called it back then. It would be extremely interesting. Like, it would be interesting all these things you're talking about. Talking to locals, talking to the National Guard, talking to some feds if there are some, talking to the migrants themselves. But I think perhaps the most important and most interesting single thing you could do is if you were able to spot who's the organizer and is it uh, a coyote, as they sometimes call these smugglers? Is it like organized crime or is it organized politics? Is it, for example, a George Soros-funded mass migration charity? And I know that sounds astonishing, but that, that's one of his major goals is mass migration. If you could spot people who are directing or instructing or helping, that would be, I think, perhaps the single most interesting thing you could report. Remember also, like when I was talking with uh, Michael Young, there was a, at the Darien Gap where thousands of migrants are crossing over, uh, there were UNICEF tent. So uh, we know that there is organization uh, that are working, they are providing maps, they are providing other supplies to them to cross over. So we will also maybe try to go to the Mexican side and uh, have a look there and have a observation what we can find there. Now you, you look like you're all alone. Like if I didn't know it, I would say you're, you know, there's not a soul for miles around. Maybe there's someone in the truck behind you. Um, have you seen, like I hear a vehicle now in the background, have you seen other journalists? Are there politicians? Are there activists? I mean, I understand there's a convoy coming. Uh, I'm a little nervous about that because it seems a little bit like a, you know, I mean, there's protesters and there's a lot of legitimate protests and legitimate opposition to this. But I'm worried that, uh, you know, the, these clever, tricky activists on the other side might try and... I don't know, do, be agents provocateurs in some way. It just felt like, um, like I, if you have a lot of grassroots guys coming to the border, I'm worried there might be sort of like that Ray Epps of January 6th. Remember him? He was exhorting people to storm the Congress. Here's a, a clip of Ray Epps. Tomorrow, we need to go into the Capitol. Into the Capitol. What? No! no. Yeah, I'm just worried that there's a ton of good people who are uh, appalled by this open border, but then there's some also some tricksters there trying to tempt good Americans into some sort of bad behavior that could then change the narrative. Because right now, the political narrative, I think, is devastating to Joe Biden. I think most Americans, not just Republicans, but independents say, what are you doing with this open border? I think the regime wants to change the subject to some rogue act on the right or something. Have you seen others? Have you seen protesters? Have you seen politicians? What have you seen on the ground? I know you've only been there since last night, so maybe this question is premature. But have you seen other people? We, we saw some uh, Americans coming from other places that are... They were just curious to see what's going on at the border. We saw also like uh, some journalists, a um, couple of them, but so far no politician and no activist and no protester. But we keep an eye open to uh, to see what's going on uh, in the next few days because we know that the convoy will arrive. I know they are coming to Eagle Pass, but Eagle Pass is a pretty, pretty big city. Uh, we were not expecting that, so we wouldn't. We don't know yet where they will stop, and uh, and uh, we will we will see. Yeah, there's a little bit of ac uh, action, I'd say, right where we are now. I think this is like the known spot, Shelby Park, where a lot of the media uh, is coming. So, like right now, I can see down that way, like there's some of looks like vlogger type people sort of recording with the phone. We saw some mainstream media here. Not sure exactly what outlet they were from, but this area that we're in right now, although it is relatively quiet, there's still a bit of movement with uh, some people walking around. But uh, 
not too many locals walking around here. It seems like everyone that's here is here for a purpose, whether they're working as personnel or uh, documenting what's happening. How long are you guys going to be down there? Uh, we are supposed to leave on Sunday, the Fe February 4th. All right, so you got three, probably three full days, maybe four days down there. I think that's enough time to get a feeling for things, maybe meet some local officials. Uh, last I saw in Eagle Pass itself on the streets, it was like a mass, you know, I won't, I won't even use the word homeless because they're migrants, but they are also houseless or homeless. I, d I don't know. I think there's a lot of different angles. And I think if you guys really, you know, get up early and get going, and who knows, maybe even at night, I, I would imagine a lot of the people smuggling happens at night. I think you guys should really ring out everything you can. We've set up a special website. Is it texasborderreports.com? Is that the special website for all your stuff? Yes, correct. All right. Well, I look forward to it. You mentioned you have the drone. You mentioned you've already done some videos. So I look forward to seeing those. Now, you guys flew economy class down from Canada to Texas. You're staying in an economical Airbnb. Uh, I imagine you're eating fast food on the go. You don't have time for anything else. Um, I don't know what the budget of uh, this journey is. I'm going to guess without checking by the time the two flights, the Airbnb, the food, the gas, the car rental are added up. I just don't think this trip's going to cost us less than 5,000 bucks. I just don't know how it could. So for viewers who think it's important, not just for us to cover the news, but also to, to as Alexa mentioned, there's that pipeline of people coming into America. This is how it worked at Roxham Road. Like it's not like upstate New York naturally has a ton of people fleeing. Of course not. They weren't New Yorkers. They weren't Americans. They were people who managed to get their feet on American soil in some way. And many of them had been ordered out of America, ordered deported. But ahead of the law, they knew that if they could make their way to upstate New York and walk across Roxham Road, that Canada, being the stupidest of the governments in the region, you could stay forever. So tens of thousands of people crossed from America into Canada. And I'm worried that if you've got literally millions of people flooding into Texas from Mexico, even if only 1% of those people make their way to the Canadian border, that is still thousands and thousands of unvetted, unqualified, untested lawbreakers coming into Canada. And I think that your facility in French and Spanish um, will be very useful. I, I fear that there's also people speaking Arabic, Persian, and various African languages too. I think it is a absolutely open wound, and I'm glad you guys are there. Last thoughts. Is there anything in particular you're looking forward to, or is there something, a particular shot or a particular story you're trying to find? Of, of course we are. We, we are really, really interested to see some migrant crossing and talking to them. But I would love to be able to speak with some politician, uh, Republican uh, uh, politician, to know a little bit their thought about what's going on. Talking a little bit about also like the heat around the legal battle uh, between the Biden administration and Greg Abbott. Maybe um, my colleague have something else? Yeah, I think just the most important part for me is just documenting uh, exactly what's going on here, trying to give the viewers a real feel for what it's like on the ground. Uh, obviously, not everyone can make it out here. You know, it's, it's far for a lot of people. So our objective, I think, is to really just give people an eye on the ground that they wouldn't be able to see otherwise basically just get as many perspectives from locals and as many angles as we can to uh, to see what what's really going on down here uh, from a first time perspective and so let's see also talking to the resident that lives next to where millions of migrants are crossing every year just to know a little bit like are they concerned about their safety do something happen to them um, we want to really feel what it is to live here at the Texas border with Mexico, where cartel with drug dealer with human smuggling people are 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 doing here. So, I I think they have a really an, another good angle on what is going on. Yeah, I can only imagine 
people who live near there, their backyards. <laughs> you know, I, could, I, I imagine they're terrified to go out in their yard. Speaking of which, I want you guys to be careful. Obviously, you're in the daylight. There's a National Guard truck just 100 feet away from you. You're in no danger now. But especially if you go out at night and if you come into contact with some of these organizers, some of them may be dopey NGOs, but others may be organized crime, drug dealers. So I want you guys to be safe. And there's no story that's worth risking your safety for. I, I would say here's some things that are interesting. If you find the organizers, whether they're NGOs or those so-called coyotes, that's interesting. If you find people who are not from Latin America, but rather sneaking in who seem to be from a different nationality, especially if it's a place where terrorism is rampant, that's interesting. If you find some feds who were there to take down the barbed wire, because remember, there's this dueling battle right now. You've got Texas, the Texas National Guard, and other Republican-oriented states trying to put up a border. And you've got the Biden administration insanely going to the Supreme Court for the right to tear down borders. If you can spot any of those feds, I'd love to you to film them taking down the border. And if they would talk to you at all, that would be amazing. It, when the protest comes, keep an eye peeled for fake agent provocateurs. I know that's hard, but just be skeptical. If you can find the Ray Epses of the world there, do that. And um, listen, follow the facts wherever they lead. I think there's a lot of amazing stories down there. I want you guys to work hard. You can sleep when you come back to Canada. I want you to be there early. I want you to do nighttime work if you can. I, uh, it sounds like you got the drone in effect. That's great. Interview everyone. Even interview the media. Uh, why Are there mainstream media that are finally there? What's their angle? What took them so long? Are they independent media? Are I think there's just... I think... Uh, Ask every possible question. There's no such thing as a dumb question. Odds are, if it's on your mind, it's on our viewers' mind too. Anyway, I'm excited for you. I'm sort of jealous that I'm not down there with you. Rebel News is always in the field. Um, I think this story is relevant to the world, but it is relevant to Canada, especially that U.S. to Canada refugee pipeline that Trudeau has established. So good luck, you guys. Stay safe. Um, it looks gorgeous, by the way. And, uh, you know, I wish, I, I'm sure you'll show us some of that natural beauty in your shots. And for all our viewers who think this is an exciting story and want to support it, our economy class travel, please help us at TexasBorderReports.com. Good luck, you guys. Thanks, Thank Ezra. Bye-bye. All right. There you have it. Alexa Lavoie and Lincoln J, two of our in-the-field Rebel News reporters. That's our specialty. I'm sure they'll have fascinating reports.